see if we got this going oh sounds like it all right starting a little later today oh, uh, got my handle material gluing up right now and I polished the blade last night also made it a little sharp, so I am going to grab some duct tape here, or masking tape. I'm just going to tape this blade off. Just so I can more safely touch it. I got my got my middle finger pretty good last night when I was sharpening it. 
And it's just such a it's such a fine cut that you know it's it's more annoying than anything else. Just gonna put a second, second layer on there just to say I did. I'm not gonna tape the whole blade off. I doubt, doubt I'll scratch it. Famous last words, right? But there we go. That'll be a little safer for me to hold on to. Definitely came out really nice. I, I was slicing tomatoes with it this morning. And really, really love the way it cuts. And I mean, I don't have the handle on it yet. Uh, it's not going to change the weight too much, but it just feels really nice. Floats in the hand. Get a little caffeine in me. This was definitely a, a fast knife build this week. Oh, we still got a few more minutes on the uh, on the epoxy there. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm gluing a uh, liner down. I picked a, a nice green colored liner. Here, that'll, that'll have some nice contrast with the uh, lighter color handle wood that I'm using. So the only, the only downside to it is it's, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother step, you know, um, If you're trying to get something glued up fast, this is not the way to do it. Uh, you know, all all in all, it's probably going to end up taking. It's probably going to take another, you know, an extra 25, 30 minutes just to to get everything to set up to the point of being able to, to use it. Um, you know, because they call it five minute epoxy. However, what they really mean to say is if you mix it. Uh, completely equal under absolute ideal conditions, then it would be five minute epoxy. But otherwise, it's probably closer to 12 to 15 minute epoxy. But I'll use this time to put stuff back where it belongs. And if somebody happens to jump into the chat, we'll use this as a, as a little Q&A. Feel free to ask questions. I may even answer them. I was going through the analytics of uh, yesterday's stream, and it seems like 4.30 is actually the, the high point for traffic 
Um, now I know our, our friends in uh, Germany and Denmark, that, that puts it back, you know, even later. So you guys are having dinner when, when I'm starting at noon. So um, I don't know. I'd like to I'd like to break it up where I do a, a morning stream and an evening stream. I think that would be I don't know. I, I just think that would be kind of nice. Um, but you know, maybe do one at noon and do another one at eight or something. It all depends. Uh, still developing that whole schedule thing. So after I uh, after I did all my hand sanding on this last night, I uh, in order to in order to stop it from oxidizing in the shop overnight, I uh, I vaseline the blade, and it cleans off really really nice, but it's also a very neutral, you know, petroleum-based oil. Um, but that way I could hang it up on the magnet overnight and I didn't have to, didn't have to worry about coming back to having a, a brown blade. I didn't get the handle so much. And you can kind of see how that sort of, sort of went a little, little goldish in color there, but I don't know if that shows up too well on that camera, but. And I'll just hit it real light with, uh, uh, what do I have here? Probably have some. I'm going to basically just scuff it up a little bit. Right where the, you know, where the handle material is going to be going. Just want to kind of clean it off. You don't want any dirt in there, but uh, you also don't have to go hog wild with it either. And then I'm going to etch the edge of this again where I sharpened it. Just had a few minor corrections that. I ended up touching up on the blade, uh, so I'll re-etch and and then just kind of polish that the actual cutting edge. Just grabbing a mixing stick here. I want to. Uh, the the epoxy is definitely set, setting up. We'll give it another probably three minutes or so before I can safely go ahead and start cutting this stuff out. And I just have some weights sitting on here. Uh, when you're using the when you're using the liner material, uh, humidity is is your absolute enemy. It seems like even the uh, even the epoxy will make it kind of curl up a little bit. Hopefully, I won't get too dirty today. It's just some woodwork. That's how it always starts. I wear I wear nice jeans that have no marks on them, no holes in them. Like, uh, you know, it's I'm not doing any hard work today. They'll be fine. Then something happens. I might want to 
up here on the other side. You know, some of that, some of that's going to have to wait until the actual wood's done. Uh, however, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to start the air compressor. So I have some air tools that will help uh, clean that up. So. It's always nice having some steel weights here in the shop. Definitely come in handy when you're gluing stuff up. So they're still just a little tacky, but I'm going to go ahead and trim them out on the scroll saw really quick just so I can keep this moving along. So there, I just trim them out. And just kind of get an idea as to the overall shape of the handle. Yet that epoxy is still just a little on the tacky side.
So I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes until I take it back over to the skull saw and trim it out. I don't want that liner material to shift around. <laughs> oh, how do you kill the boredom? So they've been sitting there probably probably close to 20 minutes or so underweight. And I may have mixed, let's see, eh, I thought I went a little heavier on the hardener, which tends to, tends to speed up the process a little bit, but... Oftentimes when I'm when I'm doing this, you know, with the liner material, um, I prefer to do it overnight. Just uh, after after polishing and uh, you know cleaning up the blade after uh, after hardening and tempering yesterday, uh, it was already getting late, and I just didn't feel like uh, didn't feel like messing with it. I had to cut the block of wood this morning in the first place, so. Well, while that's happening, I need to make sure I have brass rod. So I'll go ahead and trim that down. Dusty. All I all I did was um, if you can see it here. I just, I just took the brass rod and scored it. Oh. But that's going to make it a lot easier to go ahead and I can just snap them off then when I'm ready to use it. So this is the one I'm concerned with because that's going to be the first cut. I thought about doing a, uh, I have some, some wood here that we did with a pine cone in it, but my, my handle is just a little too long for that material. And yeah, I know I could have, you know, taken something nice and dark and put on there as sort of a, a bolster area of that handle. Uh, but I couldn't find any wood that looked really nice with it, so... And that's another one of those that I would have had to do that all last night. 
just because you really you really want that wood glue to set up overnight. Good 24 hours on it for it's cure. We'll give that another minute, I guess. I don't know why, but my allergies seem to be uh, coming back. It's been dry around here a couple of days, so that could be part of it. All right, let's take a look here. Well, I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw and trim this out. I'll be right back. So that one's done. Now, before I uh, make a mistake like I did last week, I just want to kind of line things up. There's a knot in here, and so I want that to kind of be equal on both sides. It's all about picking out the grain of the wood. Okay, so once I'm done with this piece, I'm just going to put it back under weight again. I think I reversed that correctly, so I'm going to go cut this out. I'll be back.
Okay, just want to double check something here. Make sure everything's still aligned. And bring them together. Cool. Now I'm going to clean up the front sides. Yeah, definitely still getting epoxy on the hands. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hey, Mark, how you doing? I realize there's a slight echo. I have the the small speaker on. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Congratulations. Let's clean up some of those wild edges there. There should never be any guilt about buying equipment for the shop. Oh, I really should have put rubber gloves on before I started doing all this work with Foxy. I just don't want to get it all over the blade. Alright, so this time around. We're going to go a lot heavier with the hardener. I've got boxes and boxes of them sitting over here, but it's one of those things where I never think about putting them on. It's like, oh, this is just going to be quick. I won't get any on me.
famous last words. It's like I said, I, I'm, I'm wearing a, uh, a pair of jeans that has never been in the, sh you know, they've never been in the shop before. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing anything too bad today. It'll just be some quick work. I won't get them dirty. Once again, I mean, so far, so good. But, you know, I've probably got another, uh, probably got another 45 minutes or so to screw that up. Okay, I need to turn this off. I hear way too much echo. So for the handle, um, I'm just using the some of the stabilized wood that I did on that uh, French style chef's knife uh, three weeks ago or two weeks ago, whenever it was. Uh, exact same wood. So I had a little bit of that, that block left and I looked at it and I said, well, I want to take this handle a little thinner anyway. So it worked out perfectly. Yeah, it's, it, it never fails, you know, it's that, oh, let me just touch something up. It's, it's when you go back for those, those quick corrections, you're like, oh, I'm totally fine. I could do this in my Sunday best. Uh huh. Right. And it seems like it's always within the last five minutes as well. Yeah, you, know, you could, you could paint in a three piece suit, not get any on you, and then as soon as you decide that you're gonna that you're gonna finish up and, you know. Just a just a moment or two, right then. That's when it happens. Um, with a with a really sharp belt on there, uh, I don't think that it affects the belt use so much, but it does clean out a little nicer. Um, so you know when I'm when I'm using the the gum, uh, you know this gum bar that I use to clean the to clean the crud out of there. It just seems like seems like that wood just kind of pulls out of the grit really nice. Whereas the non-stabilized woods and a lot of your softer woods really just kind of embed themselves in there. So um, But I guess depending on the abrasives that you're using, yeah, it'll probably affect your belt minimally. Uh, it definitely hand sands up a lot nicer too. But what I like about with the, the stabilized woods is that, especially for a knife that's going to be used in the kitchen, uh, you know, normal wood always has uh, expansion and contraction that happens based on the humidity of the environment that it's in. So, you know, the, the nice thing is, is with stabilized wood, you don't get that expansion and contraction. Uh, so when, when you're in an environment where you know, all your foods have moisture, you know, you're, you're cleaning constantly. Uh, it's just, it's kind of nice to negate some of that. Yeah, are they all stabilized or are they just nice cuts of wood? And you know, there's some woods that don't stabilize at all. Um, you're you're really dense and porous woods. I would say that's kind of it's kind of pointless.
I have another wood that I like to use on, on kitchen knives called uh, lignum vitae. And uh, that, that lignum is really, it's, it's almost waxy. Um, they use it as bearing material uh, in the islands uh, just because, you know, uh, I guess importing uh, bronze was a lot more expensive for machinery, so they'd make, uh, they'd make these wood bearings with it, and really, really tough stuff. They used to make uh, uh, ship's propeller shafts out of it, and also uh, the English bobbies, you know, their, uh, their night sticks were all made out of lingam uh, It's just, it's a super dense, hard wood. Uh, now that really does kind of affect the, the belts. Uh, it just, you know, kind of goes through them. I think I have, I think I still have a piece floating around here. I keep on saying I'm going to do something with. I don't, I don't tend to uh, let students use it in class just because it is a harder working wood. And it definitely does not hand sand very nicely either. I don't know where that got to. I wonder if I put it back, back on the shelf over here. It's probably so covered in dust or dirt that, you know, it's not going to stand out to me in the first place. But we've got some Bacote over here. That, that looks really nice. Sometimes when you, with the Bacote, you can see the grain of this wood. Um, it just has a lot of contrast to it. And sometimes, uh, depending on, on the tree that it came from, sometimes you get it and it's, instead of dark brown and light brown, it's really like almost bright yellow and black. And so that looks really cool. Uh, another wood that I like to use is Xeracoat, uh, but man, that gets that gets really expensive. Uh, it's about like I think it's ninety dollars for a piece about that size, and it can depending on on the grain and you know how it's been sorted, it can it can go up a lot more than that. Uh, and I've got some Amboina here that. I've got a really big burl about this. We call it the manhole cover here because it's about the size of a manhole cover. Uh, and that I need to eventually just get the moxie up to go ahead and start cutting it down into, uh, into scales. But once I do that, I might have to, I might end up putting those up on Etsy or something if I cut enough scales. Probably, probably get a good, you know, three, 300 uh, pieces out of it, 150 sets of scales. Still a little soft. I had some drip down onto the anvil. Using this anvil today for the, for the gluing stuff up. Just because, as I was forging yesterday, apparently there was some epoxy on here, and man, does that does epoxy stink when when you start burning it? Off? Yeah, I mean, again, Amboina is so uh, it's so dense that I don't know that it I don't know that it benefits from uh, from stabilizing, but it boy it, does it sand up really really nice. Uh, I just gotta take a look at this, and uh, I wish I had a bigger table saw because this thing's so huge. Uh, I might actually have to take the guides off my table saw, cut it into smaller pieces, and then put the guides back on in order to start portioning it out. But the the burl patterns in it are are really really good looking. And I'm interested to see what it looks like when I actually cut the thing open. Well, 
Well, still a little soft. I don't know what's going on today that the epoxy just isn't setting up all that fast, but I think I can risk it. Hopefully I don't go out of alignment with these. Let's see if I can get these holes drilled through nicely. Got to make sure I'm keeping a nice, consistent pressure on here. Otherwise, this epoxy is unset as it is. It can really move around, and the last thing you want to do is drill a hole and realize that you move the other two out of alignment. Hi, Jeff. How you doing? So there we go. That's uh, the first side epoxied on. Now I'll grab my second side. Again, I'm going to just clean that off. Just some roughness. I don't. I want everything to sit nice and flat. No fresh fish, so it wasn't a good fishing trip, huh? I guess there's a lot more, though, to fishing than just catching fish. Otherwise, they call it catching, right? I've got some buddies that I go fishing with, and sometimes, I mean, we normally catch something. But if we don't, hey, at least we, at least we got to hang out with friends, you know? So you got to look at it as a W that way. Just checking my alignment. Looks good. Make a little knife dinosaur there. Now I can scrub my hands once again. This is like the fifth time I think I've had to clean the epoxy off my hands. How is the river today? I haven't been out in a while. Like I said, I 
I might go out tonight. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to throw a uh, trap in for my bluegill. I could just go over to the neighbor's pond and catch some bluegill. I throw them back, but you know. My daughter's really good at that. She takes her little pole and just doesn't even put any bait on it. <laughs> you know. She caught one uh, two years ago, two summers ago. I want to say it was, I think it was about 2.8 pounds, which for a bluegill, that's freaking huge. Uh, there's some monsters living in that pond. Took a picture of her and posted it on Instagram. I swear to God, the fish was half the size that she was. Hitting the bottom, huh? You were on a pontoon boat, right? There's a there's a company there's a company up I think it's up your way uh, that makes uh, rock boats I think they call them they're essentially like armor plated uh, you know hulls on the bottom and uh, pretty pretty darn cool and they put uh, jet motors on them and that way they're just kind of just like a uh, how a jet ski works you know it sucks up the water and shoots it out the back. Uh, which you can get jet kits for just about any outboard that's out there. I think it's a I think it's a smart move, uh, especially around here with the Susquehanna the way it is. You know, yeah, sure. There's a couple of times where you go out and it's yeah 14 feet above level or whatever, but most of the time it seems like the Susquehanna is pretty low. Uh, I know on the Fourth of July I was out in my kayak. And uh, I hit bottom a few times, and I think I've only got like a two-inch draw, maybe maybe three-inch draw max. My kayak, and it, it's a heavy kayak. Uh, you know, it's ninety pounds without gear. So, but yeah, if I ever get a if I ever get a John boat, uh, I'd I'd go for you know nice flat bottom John boat, and then uh, do some aluminum panels on the bottom or even uh, rivet on some of that, uh, well, you know, countertop type material or whatever, uh, the plastic stuff, I forget what it's called because I'm trying to think of it right now. Uh, if I wasn't trying to think of it, the, the whole name would come out, but basically making skid plates for it. Or if that's going to be, I need to check the length of this one here. Yeah, you can get, uh, they make guards for them that kind of stop that, but they're not perfect. There's a, there's a really, uh, Really cool. It's a motorized kayak uh, from a company in uh, upstate New York. And I mean, these things are like five grand. I'd love to have one. But uh, it's essentially, it's a jet powered kayak. And you just kind of sit inside this thing. And uh, they're meant for, for guys who, you know, go out hunting and really want to get off the beaten path. But They'll, they'll fly over rocks and everything. It's it's pretty darn cool. Uh, I checked into it. You can actually get them registered here in Pennsylvania. But, again, that's just a, a one-person deal. You know, you can't – you'd have to have two of them if you want to go out with, uh, with a buddy or something. For me right now, I think just a just a small little putt around boat with like nine point nine horsepower motor, maybe maybe twenty. Most of the, most of the lakes that I like to go to, uh, like Cadoris uh, State Park down there, I forget the name of the, the actual lake. 
um, yeah, they're they're twenty horsepower and un, under, so. But also, they, they kind of limit it, so you, there's no jet skis there, there's nobody, uh, <coughs> nobody water skiing. So, it's kind of nice, you know, with having a young daughter, that's the kind of place I'd want to go. I don't want to go where there's a bunch of yahoos, you know, making wake and splash and everything. Just give it a couple more minutes here. That's setting up a lot faster, though. That's nice. Oh man, I didn't bring those other belts. Let's see if I have a brand new one in here. Sure, it's always the one on the bottom, isn't it? So that's a 40 grit. Clean the dust out of there. So that's ready to go. All depends on what kind of motorcycle it is. I don't know that I'd want to go fiberglass in this river. I think aluminum, you know, sounds a little bit more secure. With all the rocks out there. Just to make sure we don't go out of alignment, I'm going to drill and pin to go along here. I loved my, uh, I had a 550, KS 550. I loved that bike. That thing was bulletproof. 
didn't look great. But yeah, the motor motors on those. That was a four cylinder. Mine was a 79, I want to say, 78 or 79. No, it was an 81. That's that's what it was. It's a good bike for taking across country if you wanted to do that. So, let's clean up these pins. Glad I taped this up. <laughs> that blade is definitely, definitely a little sharp. It'll grab you. I had a little bit of excess epoxy on there, so I'm just taking a moment to clean this off. Oh, so you really, you bought a Harley. So you really like to have working projects, huh? Right, just a little bit more at the back end here. Well, that looks good. So one of these slabs is a little thicker than the other. I'm going to address that first. Okay. That looks pretty good. Oh man, I would love to take a motorcycle through Yellowstone. That's uh, that's always been like a bucket list kind of thing. I'm not going super fancy with this handle. I just want to make it nice and comfortable.
The wood definitely looks good. If I get my angles right, I just may leave some of these, uh, some of that faceting in there, you know? I think it looks nice when you when you get them nice and even. Bring this down towards the blade. A little, little wide, a little wide. I'm gonna take some of the, uh, some of the sides down here. Just thin that out. I knew that I kind of wanted a, a thinner handle on this, anyway. I was thinking that yesterday as I was forging it down. That feels good. So let's try to crisp up these corners a little bit. Make them just a little bit more pronounced. Oh, that feels nice. So I'm going to switch grits here. I don't often do this. But with this particular knife and the wood material that I'm using, yeah, they're not. Mom does not have big manly hands, so... I'm keeping that in mind as well while I'm making it. But I'd rather take some of it off with the 80 grit here just so I don't screw things up. Taking it a little thinner. I could go a little bit, a little bit more rounded on the bottom here. Oh, that feels nice. Still need to take just a little off this front paper here. a little thicker on one side than it is on the other. I like that. So, now before I forget, 
I'm gonna come in here and clean up uh, the bottom side of that handle where I can't get it with the uh, with the grinder. I'm gonna clean it up with some sanding discs. Which is the whole reason why I started the uh, air compressor earlier. Let's see. There it is. So just cleaning that up to get some shine on there. You know, you want everything kind of looking consistent. So it's still good. So we'll keep it around for tomorrow. And now I'm just going to use a little 3M pad here. good. Now, the question is, I wonder how this works on, uh, let's try it out. Keep it a little low speed. Uh, this bottom edge, I'm actually rounding out. I want to smooth that out. Take off any hard edges there. Uh, this is two inch. a three inch mandrel as well uh but i don't like them as much it, it's it's harder to control at that point and i'm just using them for a little bit of detail work before hand sanding so now that that one's just a, a cheap little right angle die grinder uh i had an ingersoll rand that finally died after probably like three years. So I was very happy with that purchase. It lasted for a long time. I just haven't been, haven't been to the place where they've had them for sale. Not that particular one, anyway. 
<laughs> Sounds like a theremin. You know, not many people know what a theremin is. But I did watch the new Bill and Ted movie, and they have a theremin in there. So I'm just hitting it with 120 right now. So I already hit it with 80 on the on the grinder. Just want to make sure I get any deep scratches out. really cool. I've always wanted to play around with one. <laughs> I don't think they I don't think they make very great music, but Right, up to 220. Now before I seal this, I'm going to go back and uh, I'm actually going to hit right in here along the spine. I'm going to hit that with a little bit of acid just to darken it up some. Yeah, great music like stepping on a cat's tail. That's about, that's a good way to sum up a theremin. That was 220. That's 1200 grit. I don't want that just yet. There's That's starting to feel really nice in the hand. That looks good. Okay, 
and should have some 400 grit laying around here. I swear I just bought a pack. The question is, where did I put that pack? There's some 400. Make sure I'm shining up that brass as well. Okay, now before I go any further, See if there should be a thing of Q tips up here. At least there were. That tends to make things a lot easier when you actually know where everything is. But it's just a little one of those little plastic packs, so if it gets pushed into one of these pigeonholes, then I don't know where they are anymore. Well, Yeah, tongue oil works great. Uh, it's it's a lot more expensive than say boiled linseed oil, but it really gives a great finish on them. So I'm just kind of graying that up just a little bit. Already, I haven't even oiled this, and it's already looking great. So, before I oil it, let's see if there's I like the feel of that with this just taking it to 400. I could take it higher if I wanted to, but I don't know. Like, I think I'd lose some of that. It has a really nice tactile feel to it. I don't want to lose that. Let's go ahead and seal it up. It's turning out really nice. I don't know if you can see that. It's probably not going to focus very well on it. It's really got some nice, nice contrast in the in the wood there. I'll be sure to post pictures on Instagram later. That's where you'll see it. You know, see more detail in it. Give it another coat with the tongue oil. Also making sure to get that those front edges. I'll take this tape off just a little a little bit so I can get right around that edge there. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, this handle material has really, really got some nice activity in it. So 
So I'm just going to let that sit for a minute while I dig out a 400 grit belt. So while I'm doing that, put that there. So that's a 220 or is that my 400? No, it's only 220. There we go. So here's the 400. Just get that ready for, literally, I just got to go over it. Probably five seconds. I mean, it's, it's already sharp, so. Let's get rid of our get rid of our tape on the edge here. And grab some of that twelve hundred. So I'm gonna just hit this real real quick in the acid. just so I can highlight the edge then. I think it's a nice look. Uh, yeah, there's 1,200. Don't need much of that. Time for another beer. Yeah, I won't get one until I get back today. I have to go deliver this thing, so... And say happy birthday to mom, you know. Rinsing that off. Bring some of that contrast back in there. That looks really good. All righty, and. I mean, this back edge is supposed to be flat, so I'm not really going to touch that at all. Perfect. Oh, one little spot. I like that. grab a piece of leather and do some stropping on this. <laughs> Celebratory bottle of bourbon, huh, Mark? Yeah, you said you were drinking beer. You know I'm kidding. Mm. 
Lord knows I drink enough of that Miller Light crap. But that's hardly that's hardly beer. But boy, is it refreshing when you're out here in the shop. So, just grabbing a sacrificial piece of paper here. That's good. Cuts real nice and smooth the whole way. And I'm, I'm not putting any effort into this at all. Not that the paper cut is, you know, it's not a great test. It really isn't. But but I'm happy with that. It cuts. I'm just checking to see where it cuts. I was cutting tomatoes with it before I put the handle on. Uh, so I already knew it was pretty darn good, but well, since I'm making a mess in the shop, I might as well make a full mess, right? There we go. So let's, uh, now I'm going to oil this up when I get it back up to the house. I'll end up oiling the blade with uh, mineral oil. Just give it one last coat here with the tongue oil on the handle. I wonder if I can pop that up at all. So we can get a better look with it. Camera up on the top left. I'm her only child, so of course I'm her favorite. <laughs> She's got three stepkids, though. So, thank you. That, I think that knife came out really, that looks really nice. And it cuts great. So, I think she'll be, she'll be happy with that. Um, I can't wait to take some pictures. And, of course, you know, maybe cut one or two more things. But that's it. That's uh, that's all the live stream forging I have planned for the week. I'm not saying that more won't happen, but that's this is what I have planned for the week. So that worked out really nice with uh, the excess steel from last week, and. Uh, a two-day project so thanks guys for watching appreciate every single one of you being here as always um, yeah like I said you'll see it on you'll see it on Instagram that's where you really get a look at the pattern and everything and you know how that how that handle material turned out but I guess it's almost five o'clock so I should wrap this thing up and uh, go deliver a knife and say happy birthday. So, all right, guys, uh, I'll be sure to post an announcement, you know, through Instagram or whatever as to what I'm planning on doing next for uh, streaming, but we'll see you. I know we'll see you all soon. So take care, guys.
Just eat.